Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, for today's sketchbook session, I think I mentioned last week that I was gonna do double baiju, and if the order is correct, we have baiju once again. So, I actually have the sketch done already. I started off with the pilot color Eno and the colored red, I think, and then I lightened up my sketch with a kneaded eraser and then I went ahead and used the Prismacolor Coal Erase and the color Carmine to do the kind of more refined finished sketch. I'm also setting up my binder clips for the edges of the page so that we can prevent it from buckling too too much and it just helps to keep the sketchbook completely flat. Even though like the sketchbook actually can lay completely flat on its own, it's totally fine so yeah. But yeah. Uh, we are going to be using gouache today, so I do have my sketch kind of prep. I'm not going to do a... What am I showing? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell. I've done three voiceovers in a row. Oh, this is from last week. Yeah, so I didn't feel very happy with my baiju sketches. So I wanted to do, or at least attempt to do a little bit more justice by drawing him today. The sketch, I don't know, I feel a little iffy. I'll tell you guys in a little bit why I feel a little bit iffy about it, besides that I usually don't draw faces like this too often. Um, but yeah, here are the materials for the sketch. My, I have the pilot color Eno, and then I have the color race. So we have Carmine, and then the red pencil from earlier. So color race is not uh, water soluble like the pilot color Eno is, so that is why I have done the sketch on top of it once again because I don't want it to disappear when we add in the watercolor washes. So just showing you guys my watercolor palette which is kind of gross looking but that is what we're going to be using to kind of prep and plan for the colors for the piece first and yeah here's the brush I'm using it's kind of beat up. And then afterwards, we're going to be using gouache, which is the Himi Mia Jelly Gouache. And I feel like I just never show you guys the case. So yeah, there, there's the case that I have for it. And we're just going to start off with the wash first because I like to kind of prime the page a little bit. Um, sometimes, actually, this one wasn't as bad. So if you watched last week's video where I was doing a little bit of the watercoloring portion, you might have saw that some areas didn't allow me to put water as easily. You can see in some areas here, I'll try to draw like a red circle around it so you guys can see it. Um, that has a little bit of like splotches here and there and I think that's because of the contact of like different oils from my hand or any debris and stuff on the paper. Because this paper is very smooth, I feel like sometimes it has a hard time also just laying down flat washes like this. As long as like the paper is clean, I think it should be okay. Like the glove doesn't look that bad. His hair for the most part has more or less like a solid color, um, except like minus a few areas. But uh, it, once I add in kind of like a basis of watercolor here, it kind of gives something for my gouache also to kind of stick to, but also the rest of the watercolor to stick to. So like when you see me add a little bit of the darker green into his hair it was more easier to get a smoother uh, flat color because I am basically painting on top of something that already has a little bit of grit now because the kind of like the pilling of the paper makes it a little bit more rough in a sense it doesn't pill up super like a lot it's just very minimal it just gives it a little bit of texture and something for the paint to grab to every time I add a new layer um, but yeah we switched over to gouache and I was gonna say something and I kind of totally forgot. But oh yeah, let's just talk about the gouache first and then we'll get into the rest of the rambles, I guess. So for gouache, I'm starting off with the face. And like I said, I don't really draw faces like this too often. I think it's because certain angles of the nose look better if you draw the nostrils. Um, so I decided to draw um, his his nose a little bit less simplified compared to how I usually do it because I wanted the bottom of the nose to be present. Does that make sense? Just because of the angle. Now, the angle might not make sense and it's gonna make less sense as I paint because initially I wanted him to be laying down and that's why his head's kind of cocked to the side a little bit and he's looking up at the viewer. And if I wanted that to happen, I needed to sink like further the right side of his face into the surface a little bit and then I lost his shoulder because I threw in a flower and a hand over it so we, the angle's kind of gone so um, once we start to paint more with gouache I'm gonna adjust the piece a little bit so that it just doesn't look like it's in that awkward phase of either is he leaning 
is he laying down or is he just like cocked his head to the side kind of thing. So I'm gonna try to minimize the hair a little bit because initially I had the hair on the right side to flow out a lot more as if it was supposed to be on the surface of like the floor or something because he was supposed to be laying down. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of chip away at that once we get the background color. Um, but I think in terms of gouache, some previous sessions that I've done gouache, I've been more or less unhappy with how I was applying it or just like my color combinations or just like general painting. I was having a lot of issues, so I was very hesitant wanting to do this one in gouache, but I thought maybe sizing up would make it a little bit easier. And for the most part it is, but I got very tired very quickly. So because I did kind of like the double spread, but we did him like vertically. Um, if you've seen any other gouache painting videos that I usually do in the like this particular sketchbook or any A5 size sketchbooks, I usually gouache paint mostly one page and then maybe it spills over to the other like other page so it kind of makes like a two page spread but for the most part uh i usually paint a little bit smaller but not like super duper small like the one i did where i needed to do redemption and i did a copic not a copic a alcohol marker version of it but I thought sizing up would at least make me have an easier time painting the face and I was correct uh, But I did spend like pretty much all my time on the face and the hair and trying to make sure that it doesn't look as bad as I Think it was gonna be if that makes sense. Hopefully um, But yeah, you can see I was trying to put the background in knocking it back and making that one side a little bit more into shadow because I was trying to trick myself into maybe trying to still make it him laying down in a sense, but I think it just doesn't work. So yeah, I had to chip away from his hair a little bit later. Also nose. Nose is gonna look funky for quite a while until I add the uh, cooler under shadow for his little ball of his nose part, um, because right now it looks like a brick on his face or like a little chocolate lego piece or something like it just looks kind of funky because it's just weirdly propped up it looks like <laughs> so yeah and kind of like where i gave up for the painting is probably anything below the face so i think i had this problem when i was painting him with watercolor as well is the fact that every time i look at his clothing especially because he usually has a snake around his neck i don't know what's going on with his clothing and i can't wait until when he's finally released and then hopefully uh i think it's game fashion archive hopefully they'll have a model where the snake chungsheng i don't know the name of the snake i apologize hopefully they'll have a, like a model where the snake isn't present so that i can finally see what's under there because i don't understand how the collar is connecting to the rest of his his clothing and i feel like i need that missing piece for me to make sense of his clothes um, and I think it's just because also just lack of reference in general. I think it was hard for me to find a proper reference of his outfit. Um, I can easily find one of usually like, let's say Kaveh, who isn't released, but there's leaks of him having like, I guess like your typical T-pose kind of thing, but there's like a full turnaround. So I can actually look at his whole model. But for Baiju, I keep finding pictures where his arm or hand is covering the one shoulder. So I don't know if he's, is he symmetrical for the most part? I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see in the future. I'm, I feel like I'm just making up excuses on why I don't like my Baiju drawings um, that much. I'll try to do him justice one day. I don't think he looks bad here. He's just off but i feel like that's just me not noticing that his mouth and eyes should i point this out i'll point it out but okay his eye line is tilted his nose is kind of tilted but his mouth feels straight and i feel like it's parallel with the the, the what is it called the inside seam of the book like where the binding is and because it feels so parallel it doesn't match with the rest of his face, so he looks very off. Like, I feel like if I look at the bottom of his face, I feel like his face isn't tilted, but if I look up at his eyes and partially where his nose is, his face is supposed to be tilted, so he looks he looks off. Uh, yeah, this is things I don't plan out correctly because I don't use 
guidelines or I'm not paying attention. So it's just, you know, a little bit of lack of care on my part, I guess. Also what he's holding, I was going to make him hold violet grass. Um, but once I sketched it out, I didn't pull up a reference again. So I don't know if these colors are technically accurate and they probably aren't. Um, but I guess we'll just deal with that at a later date because I don't know. I feel like the trend for my sketchbook at this point is we'll deal with it. And if I hate it, I'll just hate it. Like that's just about it. I've come to accept that I will hate a lot of the pieces I've drawn in my sketchbook and I'm fine with that now. Uh, probably because like I do want to be finished with this one pretty soon. Uh, because of how long I've had this one and I feel like I need to move on once again. Um, I'm at that state. Um, luckily we are past halfway. I want to say we're past two thirds as well. Uh, so hopefully we're in the little long stretch, long stretch, short stretch. We're in the last stretch, I guess, um, in terms of how many spreads I have left, because like I said, the paper's kind of thick, so we actually don't have too many spreads left. Actually, let me count um, now that we're just working on the line work, because this is kind of the part where I spend the most time just trying to make sure things look correct, um, because I rely a lot on the line work or having contrast kind of fix up some of the areas that might look a little bit weird, um, because it kind of gives context to things a little bit. So while well, that kind of gets fixed up, let me count the pages or the spreads I have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen? Thirteen-ish spreads? Maybe it's a lot more than I remembered. Uh, but it feels like I'm on the last stretch of it. So hopefully, hopefully. I'm, I'm hoping there's only maybe like two or three uh, sketchbook videos, doodle videos, sketchbook doodle videos that I'll do for the sketchbook, including the last page. So that it means that I did some sketchbook work outside of me recording. Cause recording is good uh, just because I dedicate Monday videos to the sketchbook and it forces me to draw in the sketchbook regardless if I want to or not. Um, which is kind of like why I like having consistency if I can. Um, cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, if you're tired, don't record videos. Like you don't need to keep up with your schedule or whatever. But part of me, it's just like the schedule helps me stay on track. Like <laughs> I feel like I'm productive if I stick with my goal, but also like smaller goal of like drawing so frequently is because I have to upload kind of thing. It's kind of like a back and forth because some people ask like, why do you, you not get as burnt out with drawing? I genuinely just like drawing and I feel like even when I'm not recording videos, I'm still drawing. So I just genuinely like drawing a lot, um, even though I do have other hobbies I could be doing or picking up new hobbies. Drawing is just, I don't know, it's, it's fun for me. <laughs> um, even if I do draw things like silly things or things that may look the same, I just find enjoyment in the process of it, if anything. So that's why I think I keep coming back to working with gouache, even though I detest it a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I wanted to show up a close up of this, by the way. I'm dry brushing with white paint or white gouache with a dry brush so that we can get a little bit of glowy looking areas. And I used dry brushing a lot back when I used acrylics. Um, to make things look a little bit smoother because I didn't really understand of how to do painting in general. So yeah, but dry brushing is fun to do for like glowy bits if you want to do it as like an after effect kind of thing. And I think it looks kind of pretty here. So we just add a little bit of dust particles, sparkles here and there. I'll add in the little white glass parts for his lenses as well, which I forgot to draw his lenses at all or indication of it every time I draw on him. Um, I've only drawn like the the rims or the frames of his glasses. I don't know why I keep forgetting. I don't know if it's because it's not as noticeable because like they're frameless at the top. They're just like little half circles or half ovals at the bottom. But yeah, just a little bit of gouache to show that he has some glasses here. I don't remember if I add a little bit of reflective light. Kind of hope I did, um, but maybe I didn't, who knows. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for today's painting though, for the most part. So I think it did help me like the painting a little bit more once I added the darker blue shadow for his nose. It kind of made it make more sense uh, with the drastic kind of shift of plane for his nose. And I added to his chin a little bit too. And then some areas where the hair touches the face um, just because the nose became very jarring at some point. But yeah, I don't hate this piece. I don't love it either. 
and hopefully it just makes me want to draw him a little bit more because I want to do him justice, I really do. I do like Baiju as a character, I do like Kaveh a little bit more, um, and Kaveh is just incredibly pretty, like I love looking at his official artwork for whatever reason, but I do like Baiju quite a bit and I'm excited for him, so I, I hope to summon him in the future, but I also hope to be able to draw this man <laughs> and maybe draw snakes, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I think that's it for the for the painting though. Also, yeah, I just added a little bit of white paint to his lip and then smudged it. His face does look off. I think it's because of the thing I mentioned. And his chin looks extra long because of that that line also for the for the what is it called? The book seam part. So apologies that he's kind of long face, horse faced ish. But yeah, here here's what he looks like. You can see I'm getting closer to the, the back of the sketchbook. And yeah, let's take off the binder clips and you can see how ridiculous this kind of looks with the little gaps because I'm too lazy to fill them in. Usually at some point I will shift it. Like I could shift the blue um, binder clip to his hair and I could have painted up the corners and then just slowly shift it again after it dries to fill in those corners, but I didn't do it. Um, that or you can tape them off as well and have a border. I think that's about it for today's session and apologies that it's another rambly one but I will talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!